Okay, good evening everyone. I would like to call the board, Gateway School Board of Directors, Free Organization Meeting. Today is Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Um, Bonnie, can we have a oh school director of Pleasure Thank you. Which is the chair of 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 here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Gottman? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Ritter? Here. Mrs. Warning? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Okay, thank you. Everyone is present. I would also like to report that we just came out of executive session to discuss personnel issues and litigation, and that's why we were a little bit late in beginning, so apologize for that. At this time, we're going to hold an election of a temporary president. The temporary president shall be elected from among the holdover members. In an election year, holdover members are members whose terms are not expiring or beginning anew. This year, that would actually be all of us. Mr. Clary, myself, Mrs. Delaney, Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Gottman, Mr. McIntyre, Mr. Ritter, Mrs. Warning, and Mr. Williams. The temporary president will run our election of president and our reorg meeting. Is there a nomination for temporary president? All right, we yeah, don't need a second for this, but that would be good anyway. We have Mr. Scotty Williams, who has nominated Mr. Paul Caleri. Um, are, there any, are there any other nominations or a motion to close nominations? Okay, I have a motion to close nominations. So we need a roll call vote from Mrs. Isha. Uh, yes. Who is no? the motion to close the nomination, please? That was Mrs. Warning. Do I need a I'm second? Do you need a second? I'll, I'll second. Just a second from Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams was a second. Okay. Do I need a vote okay. on closing or are we just voting on Paul? We'll just vote on Paul. Okay, so I need a Roll call vote on Mr. Clary as being our temporary president. Mr. Clary. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Mr. Williams. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Motion carried. Temporarily hold the gavel. Okay, thank you. Um, since we, we don't have any incoming new board members, we're just gonna skip right through that. Um, okay, um, first, uh, really the only order of business here, um, the secretary has handed each of you, a, no, sorry, skip that. Uh, you have all of, um, all of you see the attached agenda. It's a list of all of the qualified legally elected or appointed members of the board of directors for the year now beginning. Does anyone see any errors or inaccuracies? Since that was, we're good. Um, since we don't have anybody new coming on. Um, uh, the nominating committee was that of myself, Mr. Ritter and Mr. Williams. And the nominating committee did present candidates names for president to the board secretary um, and the ballot was prepared. Additional nominations for officers will be taken from the floor and added to the ballot. Election of the officer shall be by a majority of those present and voting. Where no such majority is achieved on the first ballot, 
A second ballot shall be cast for the two candidates who receive the greatest number of votes. The board secretary will read the results in public, including how each member voted. And then the gavel will be passed to the new president at that time. Um, we have the ballot on the screen as well as um, in front of you for those who are here. Are there any questions as to how the proceedings will go for many of the members? Um, now, I would like to point out that our policy says that voting is supposed to be by ballot, but since we're doing some remote, that Mrs. Isha is going to record their communication to her via chat as a recorded ballot. So we're in compliance with our policy. And that may lead to a little bit of delay between the two meetings, just so everyone's aware. And we'll be able to print those out for verification. And so just to be quite specific about it, it's going to be what's called a private chat message. So no board member can see any other board members vote prior to Bonnie getting all the votes. So when you send your chat, it needs to go to Bonnie Isha private message. And then she'll collect it. All right, so what are we voting on, Mr. Um, uh Right now we are voting on president. Vote for one of the three. Oh, nominees. Um, the candidates, um, for those who, do I read the candidates? Sure. Uh, Mr. Gottman, uh, Mr. Ritter, and Ms. Warren. Mrs. Warren. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, we'll wait for Mrs. Isha to receive the uh, online report. Yes, for those who can't, Mrs. Isha, Bonnie, Mrs. Isha already collected um, the letter here for her paper ballots, and the delay here is going to be her collecting the private ballots from the Zoom. The Zoom chat. Zoom chat. Zoom chat. So, thank you. Okay, I do have the uh, ballots from the Zoom chat as well as the paper ballots that those who are here present. Um, I will read the ballots from the Zoom chat first. Um, Mr. McIntyre is voting for Mr. Gottman. One moment, please. Mr. Gallagher is voting for Mr. Gottman. Mrs. Bellaney is voting for Mr. Gottman. And Mr. Gottman is voting for Mr. Gottman. And um, the ballots I have in front of me, I have Mrs. Warning has, is voting for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Williams is voting for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Clary is voting for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Ritter is voting for Mr. Ritter and Mrs. Warning is voting for Mrs. Warning. Uh, that, that last one, you said Mrs. Warning twice. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cerucci is voting for Mrs. Warning on the last one. Okay. So Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goffin so has four votes and Mrs. Warning has four. Okay, in this case, we now have to take the top two candidates and we will now have a runoff vote. That's correct. Um, one moment, please. I'll give up, bring a second ballot into the room for those voting by ballot. One moment, please.
All right, is that uh, Okay, and the ballot number two. Okay, for those of you who okay, I have um, on the Zoom chat, I have Mr. McIntyre voting for Mr. Gottman. I have um, Mr. Gottman voting for Mr. Gottman. Mrs. Delaney voting for Mr. Gottman. And Mr. Gallagher voting for Mr. Gottman. Um, on ballot number two, I have Mrs. Cerucci voting for Mrs. Warning. I have Mr. Ritter voting for Mr. Gottman. I have Mr. Clary voting for Mrs. Warning. I have Mr. Williams voting for Mrs. Warning. And I have Mrs. Warning voting for Mrs. Warning. Um, Brian Gottman has the majority. Gap will be passed to Mr. Gottman for president. Congratulations, Brian. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to pass the virtual gavel. But, uh, <laughs> oh, man, Brian, thank you. Um, what's that? Okay. Um, um, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you. All right. Um, I guess I start this off now. We have to have yeah. the election for vice president. Um, I'll continue through, Brian, um, just to for the election of vice president, and then okay. um, at your pleasure, and then uh, <laughs> then you'll you can start with number six. All right, that works. All right. Um, okay. Let it be resolved that the Gateway School Board of Directors. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that was for Brian to start. Okay, you six. threw me off. Brian, yes. you started number six. Sorry. Speaker superintendent. Um, <laughs> I think it's number five. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. Okay, now we're going to move on to the election of the vice president. Um, the nominating committee appointed by the immediate past president, which was comprised of myself, Mr. Ritter, and Mr. Williams. Um, we presented the candidates' names for a vice president to the board secretary, the ballots were prepared. Um, additional nominations for officers will be taken from the floor and added to the ballot. Election of the officer shall be by a majority of those present in voting. Where no such majority is achieved on the first ballot, a second ballot shall be cast with the two candidates who received the greatest number of votes. The board secretary will read the results in public, including how each board member voted. Um, if there are no questions on the procedure, 
hearing no questions, we will move forward with the voting. Again, um, those of us that are meeting via Zoom will vote via private chat with uh, Mrs. Isha, and those of us present will vote by paper. Are there any additional nominations um, that would like to be made on the floor? Yes, I would like to nominate Valerie Warning for vice president. All right, I have a on the floor of um, nomination for Valerie Warning. I do not believe a second that is a nomination. Um, I would like to remove my name from candidates for vice president and second the nomination of Valerie Warning for vice president. Okay. Um, Mr. Dice, can I just rescind the nomination for Mary Beth to have it removed from the yes. ballot? Yes, if she's asked for it, you can remove it. Okay, at the request of um, Mrs. Ferrucci, her name will be removed um, as a candidate for um, vice president and Mrs. Warning um, by nomination of Ms. Delaney and not needed but seconded by Ms. Ferrucci will be placed on the ballot. The two candidates on the ballot at this time now will be John Ritter and Valerie Warren. Okay. Make a motion to close the nomination. There's been a motion to close the nomination, so I have a second. Second. Um, all, of, yeah, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. First, read the nominations for vice president. Mr. McIntyre votes for Mr. Ritter. Mrs. Delaney votes for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Gallagher votes for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Gottman votes for Mr. Ritter. Mr. Williams votes for Mrs. Warning. Mrs. Warning votes for Mrs. Warning. Mrs. Cerucci votes for Mrs. Warning. Mr. Ritter votes for Mr. Ritter. And Mr. Caleri votes for Mrs. Warning. Thank you, Mr. This morning has um, six votes. This morning is vice president. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for nominating me, Mrs. Delaney. Okay, now that the uh, voting and nominations and voting are concluded. Um, Congratulations, Mr. President, and the floor is yours, number six. All right, thank you, Mr. Caleri. All right, uh, Ms. Isha, we can get the agenda back up whenever you can. One moment, please. Thank you. Take your time. Oh, uh, he's cracking a whoop already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. We're on number six. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, number six, uh, for the school board meetings for the 2021 year, um, resolved that the Gavis School Board of Directors sets the calendar of school board meetings for 2021 as attached and authorizes the secretary to advertise said meetings in accordance with the Sunshine Law. Do we have any uh, comments or questions regards to our calendar? We need a motion and second first before discussion. Oh. 
Okay, motion. Second. second. All right, got the motion. Is it with the motion? Paul Caleri motion. Second by Mr. Williams. Thank you. Okay, now then, do we have any questions or comments regarding our calendar? Is the calendar visible? Did we get that? It was, it's on board docs. Let me, um, let me pull that up for you. Okay. Okay, because I saw, yeah, I was looking at the 2020. Okay. Alrighty. I got it. Okay. Are we okay, ready any for roll call? Any other questions? All right, seeing none, let's do a roll call. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleri. Aye. All righty. And moving on to number seven, the appointment of a solicitor and resolved that the Gateway School Board of Directors reappoint Mr. Bruce Dice and Associates PC as solicitor under current terms and conditions agreed upon. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Caleri, second by Mr. Williams. Questions or comments? All right, seeing none, can we get one more roll call? Yes, Mrs. Delaney. Mrs. Delaney. I'm sorry, I was muted. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. No. Mrs. William, Mr. Williams. Aye. I'm sorry. What was that? Was an aye. Aye. That was an okay. aye. Mr. Caleri. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Dice. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, mm -hmm. now it looks like that's the end of our reorganization meeting. So, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Caleri has for the motion. Mr. Williams for the second. Uh, any other questions, comments? All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Hey, Brian, raise your yeah. hand. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Read the gavel for you. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to move uh, right into the combined study session regular meeting. Give one me minute one break. second. One minute break. Yes. <clears throat> Two minute break. All right. I'll try to do the yeah. I'd like to call order the Gateway School District Board of Directors hybrid regular board meeting for uh, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020. Uh, seeing as we've done the Pledge of Allegiance, let's go straight to uh, roll call. Okay. Mrs. Cerucci. Here. Mrs. Delaney. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Gottman. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mrs. Warning. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Okay, thank you, Ms. Isha. Uh, do we have any comments from the residents on agenda or non-agenda items? No, I have no comments. I haven't received none. Okay, well, we'll just keep tabs on that through the meeting. Uh, we're gonna go over to section A, minutes of the previous meetings. <clears throat> here on my template. We have a motion and a second. John makes a motion to accept the minutes from the previous meetings. I'll second, Scotty. Thank you. All right. Um, let's do a uh, 
All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. I see none. We're going to move on to section B, uh, list of bills. Uh, Mr. Schott. Thank you, Mr. Gottman. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a section B this evening since today is December 1st. Uh, we have just downloaded uh, district bank statements and begun the reconciliation process. Uh, there will be uh, the, the bills for a month of December addressed uh, further along in the agenda during section F. Okay, very good. All right, section C, previously tabled items. I don't believe we have any. No. So we're gonna move. All right, we're gonna move on to section D, personnel items. Mrs. Crump. Thank you, Mr. Gottman. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda items one through three as list listed in section D for the combined study session and regular board meeting of Tuesday, December 1st. Under leave of absence, we have eight presented this evening. Under employment, we're recommending a second semester temporary teacher, uh, which is Mr. Philip Mem. That is to replace Amanda Morgenstern, who has bid into the positive behavior specialist position. And we also have one supplemental contract. Okay, thank you. Do we have a, a motion? John makes the motion. Scotty seconds the motion. All righty. Uh, questions? Was, um, John, John that Ritter me. that made the motion. That is correct. Mr. Williams okay. with the second. Thank you. Okay, we have any questions or comments? I just have a quick question, Mr. Gottman. Yeah. Um, the, uh, Mrs. Crump, um, with the uh, school counselor, um, is that going to uh, create a need um, or do we have somebody that's, that's available to fill in during those intermittent times? Um, the position that was vacated was the positive behavior specialist. And so we, per the contract, we put that up for bid and we did have an internal candidate, Amanda Morgenstern, who bid into that position. So she will be filling that position and Mr. Mem will be filling Ms. Um, Morgenstern's position for the remainder of the year. So we will be um, full in all positions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, anybody else? Okay, seeing none, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Mrs. Delaney? Aye. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Gottman? Aye. Mr. McIntyre? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. And Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All righty. Uh, we're going to move on to Section E, Conferences and Conventions, and I believe there are none in this section as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Then we'll move on to Section F, Administrative Resolutions. Dr. Short? Thank you, Mr. Gottman. Uh, if we could have Dr. Rossi take the elementary education portion. Thank you, Dr. Short. Item number one is approve the following technology training service proposals as listed. Item number two is approve the 30 day display of my perspectives, which is a grade six ELA resource. Item number three, approve a pilot with the mind, mind play for ELA resource. Item number four, final approval of the following policies placed on 30 day display beginning October 20th, 2020. Item number five, approve the payment of all applicable district section B1 list of bills by the business manager for the month of December 2020 in accordance with board policy number 616. Note, the list of bills will be compiled and emailed to the board for review on December 15th, 2020. Their board will have until the close of business on December 22nd, 2020 to review the list of bills and ask any questions regarding the payments. The vendor check payments will then be mailed to the vendors on December 23rd, 2020. Item number six, Approve the acceptance of the district's June 30th, 2020 audited financial statements, including supplemental information and the single audit report package as prepared by the district's local auditors, Elmkoski, Axelrod LLC for the 1920 fiscal year 
and authorize the release of the applicable statements and reports as required to the federal, state, and other various oversight agencies prior to the December 31st, 2020 and the March 31st, 2021 reporting deadlines. Note, the audited financial statements will be emailed to the board for review as soon as the document is completed by the district's local auditors and prior to formal release by December 31st, 2020 to meet the deadlines for the district's bond post issuance uh, disclosure requirements with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The local auditors will make a formal presentation to the board regarding the results of the audit during one of the scheduled January 2021 board meetings. Item number seven, approve the TRICOG Land Bank's notice of proposed property disposition for a Pitcairn property located within the Gateway School District and the district does not object to the proposed disposition of the property as depicted in Exhibit A. Note the district is a member of the TRICOG Land Bank. The above approval represents the first proposed property disposition by the TRICOG Land Bank within the Gateway School District. Item number eight, approve the hiring of ATK Design Studios LLC to perform the food service consultant professional services required for the Gateway Middle School renovation project and specifically to assist Access Architecture PC the district's architect for the project to prepare the design of the new food service department food preparation and student serving areas, which will be directly incorporated into the bid specifications for the project in the amount of $23,438 as depicted in Exhibit B. Okay. Second. Right. We got a motion by Mr. Williams, a second by Mrs. Rucci. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I have just a real quick one for Mr. Schott. Um, I understand the logistics of the, the list of bills being available on the 1st. Um, you mentioned that it will be available for the board to review before the 15th. Uh, will that be available for the public to, to view as well? We can, we can post those out there. What we typically do with those documents is we acknowledge them officially uh, in this case, it would be in the January minutes for that, but we can also post that out there. I can have Mrs. Isha do that. It's not a problem. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Anybody else? All right. I do just have one comment on number four for policies. And just a reminder, because um, this is for final approval, these uh, policies were just updates uh, to the current ones. Um, so not much has already changed with them, but updated with the current times. All right, so with that, can we get a roll call, please? Yes. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. With the exception of, oh, where was it? The, the tricog one, what number was that? Seven. Seven, yes, with the exception of seven. Seven, that's no, okay. Mr. McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. <laughs> Sorry about that, aye. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye for all but seven. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. And Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Motion carries. Alrighty. Uh, section G, resolutions are sent by board members. I believe that is also empty, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, do we have any comments from the residents on agenda or non-agenda items? Um, I have, I've received no comments at this time. Okay. And we will then move on to board reports. Uh, Dr. Short, you can start us off. Thank you, Mr. Gottman. Uh, I would just like to personally thank uh, Mrs. Rucci for her uh, two-year run as president. Um, an excellent job. Thank you. Also, Mr. McIntyre, uh, I want to thank you uh, for your role as vice president. I've enjoyed working collaboratively with both of you uh, to enhance not only the academic um, portion of what we do here, uh, but also how we operate and maintain uh, our status as a leading school district in Eastern Allegheny County. So I, I personally thank you. Um, thank you. Mr. Thank you Dr. Yep. Uh, look forward to working with you and Mrs. Warning. I, I know we have a lot to cover. 
uh, over the next uh, year uh, with the pending project that is at the forefront. But uh, uh, I've known both of you a long time, and uh, I really look forward to working with both of you, along with our central administrative team. Uh, also, on these, uh, November 23rd, uh, a letter went out from my office indicating that uh, we would be moving into remote learning as a district for all of our buildings. And this would be for a two week period uh, that would be ending on December or through December 4th. Um, I'm advising our residents, uh, community, teachers, students, parents, that I will be updating everyone on the status of where we're at as a district tomorrow via communication that will go home. Uh, so uh, please be on the lookout for that. Uh, that we'll have uh, some important information uh, with where we stand as a district and a substantial level of COVID cases and uh, the situation that is really encompassing not only Allegheny County, but the state as well. So. Uh, uh, I will update the community tomorrow. Um, we do have Mr. Don Hall uh, available on um, Zoom if there are any questions for the board concerning uh, the athletics and activities. Can we have Mr. Hall just give us an update? We could do that. Mr. Hall, are you with us? I am. You can provide um, our public uh, with information about where we stand um, during this time where we have been uh, off remote learning and the district has been shut down. And any news from the WPIAL or PIAA? The, uh, the PIAA and the WIPIAL have chosen to go forward with the winter calendar as scheduled. Uh, and the guidance was basically like, uh, unlike the fall where they unilaterally moved everyone back a couple weeks and reset the schedule. Uh, they left the schedule with a November 20 practice date start in place. Um, and it, basically the question that's been on everyone's mind, including ours clearly, has been what to do when we go to fully remote learning as far as athletics go. It seems counterintuitive to many that we would empty our buildings and then bring our sports teams and potentially crowds of, of spectators, uh, even at the diminished numbers that the governor's given um, into our facilities. Um, however, I, I will tell you that, um, and I think I can share my screen. Is that true? Um, try. I, I did share with the board uh, the information that you provided okay. me. Um, and, and an update to that is uh, Latrobe had, um, Latrobe had, been pondering the question as a board this evening as well and uh and they basically decided to go forward with playing competitions you know and, and continuing on with practice um their rationale was that and, and many of the others i've spoken with it's a voluntary activity um it is um a recommendation from the governor not a mandate as they clearly state in the document of his uh, most recent, recent guidance. And a large majority of all, all of the other teams and schools, districts that we compete with are going forward. Um, the tricky part for us in the fall is if, the, if in the fall when everything was moved back a couple weeks, you know, you know uh, in concert with everyone, then we all were sort of on the same, you know, figuratively speaking, playing field no pun intended, in terms of that, um, that timing. The difference now is that many of the schools that we compete with in our sections in the different sports, and we're talking about swimming, boys and girls basketball, and wrestling are the winter sports that are in play. Um, our conference members, many of them are continuing to practice and play, uh, which would not be what we would do if we would continue to not participate in athletics while we were closed um, as far as going remote. Um, what some have suggested is at a minimum, uh, and it even is addressed in the governor's guidance, uh, to allow our teams to you know, to practice. Um, there is a minimum number of practices required before a team can scrimmage and a minimum number that's required before they can play a game or a competition. 
it's five for scrimmages and 15 for um, for games competitions. That being the case, if we were to say let's not practice at all until after January 1st in strict or direct compliance with the governor's recommendation, and again, recommendation, not mandate, then we would then have to practice 15 times after January 1st before we could play. And you can't practice on Sundays usually. You have to take one day off per week. So at a maximum, that would be two and a half weeks into January. Um, basketball playoffs start in February. So we're really behind the eight ball if we don't do anything at all until, unless again, we were not going to have winter sports as a district, um, we would be seriously behind the eight ball if we don't do anything until that point. One other thing um, before, and I'll certainly take questions as they come up. One other thing that I think comes into play here in which we're particularly well suited at Gateway is, um, is our facility setup. Um, all of those teams that I mentioned work out of our sports complex, the Henry Fury Sports Complex. That's pretty unique. Not many schools have facilities that are completely not in their high school building. Um, it gives us the ability to isolate where those activities are taking place, if, if it's practice or if we decide to go and play our schedule. Um, we're talking about the ability to, you know, fog the gym multiple times, you know, uh, even per day, but certainly we see daily. The pool, as it was described to me by, by uh, Bob Brown, you know, it's basically um, the water in the pool is essentially what they use to fog and, and to, uh, disinfect our buildings. It's, it's water and, and chlorine, you know, basically. Um, so certainly a safe environment for student athletes. Um, and then our wrestling mats may be the cleanest spot on campus. The coaches clean them twice daily and our maintenance people clean them at least once and sometimes twice daily as well. Uh, so we're looking at an isolated building. We're looking at the ability to, um, you know, using the pod method, you know, only one team at a time in any one facility, um, fogging it afterward, voluntary activity for a student athlete who can certainly opt out, not like trying to get 180 school days or figure out how to meet a mandate. If a student athlete doesn't feel comfortable with their family, they can just not participate in that activity. Um, so again, all those things on the table, many of our other districts, and, and, and again, the information that uh, Dr. Short shared with you, and now add to that list, Latrobe, many of those districts um, are going forward with sports and treating it as a recommendation rather than a mandate or a directive from the governor. Um, we certainly have questions to, you know, to, is concerning um, spectators at events. We have cer certainly some ideas about how we conduct swim meets, basketball games, wrestling meets, things like that. Um, we've canceled things like the Eastern tournament that we've hosted for like 40 some years because we were going to move it to the Monroeville Convention Center um, for more space and then decided that it wasn't prudent. So um, we're already sort of backed off on some of the things that are referenced by the PIAA. Um, and some of their guidance does limit how many teams can be in an open wrestling tournament, how many teams can be at a basketball tournament and so on. Um, but um, I'm probably getting into a little more specifics by sport. Uh, questions or thoughts from anybody? Yes, Mr. Hall, I'm just curious, and it's unfortunate uh, for many of our seniors, but again, I always err on the side of caution and health, and should seniors opt not to participate in certain sports, will this have a real adverse effect on their being maybe picked up by certain colleges or uh, their future? Um, without question, a student that, that doesn't have another season to participate would right. not have the opportunity to be on film and maybe to be recruited by certain entities. Um, definitely, this, this would be the time for many of our student athletes to, to get that opportunity. So in light of the situation, what, there are no uh, considerations or what? Uh, well, what's interesting is that at the collegiate level, uh, the NCAA has opted to, to try to remedy the situation 
but they've only done it halfway. And what I mean by that is they have told seniors in their final year of eligibility in college that they can have another year of eligibility. Essentially, you typically you get five years to play four. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, some will redshirt, it's called, and then play for four years of eligibility in the five-year window. Well, now the NCAA is saying, because of this, we're going to give you a sixth year. However, um, we're not doing it at the high school level, saying you get another year of high school eligibility, and we're not providing a sixth year, potentially, for incoming freshmen um, mm -hmm. into college. One thing, let me explain what, what effect that has in a, a dramatic, immediate way. There was a student athlete from Pine Richland who had a scholarship offer from Liberty University and accepted that, you know, verbal to go there, uh, didn't sign yet. And because Liberty University had many of their seniors opt to stay, that eliminated the number of scholarships or limited the number of scholarships they had to give for the class coming in. And that guy was just told, you don't have a scholarship anymore. Um, I really think the NCAA has to react on both ends of it and maybe add a year to the incoming class to match just for this class and the outgoing class to make it make sense. But um, in the short run, you know, the state organization or the local organization certainly hasn't approved any sort of plan where you could have another year of eligibility because mm -hmm. of COVID to continue. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, I have a question if it's okay. Sure. Um, the the list of schools that you've been in conversation with with the survey, um, how many of those are currently on full remote and planning to remain on full remote into January where this is um, that they're in the exact same situation that, that we are? Um, and I... I I noted as, as you were you were you were sharing about the clean wrestling mats. Um, having been a wrestler, the mats were always clean before and after the the mat. But us wrestlers weren't. The, uh, we were before the match, but not after. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot there's a lot of um, immediate direct contact. Yeah. Absolutely, between wrestlers, you know, right. they they made provisions for making sure that the mats were clean, even like an alternating mat you know, dual meat kind of deal where they could clean one while the other was in use and that sort of thing. Um, basically, um, many of the districts that we're talking about, certainly many in Allegheny County are, are fully remote. Um, I know off the, off looking at the list here, it's not on that list. Um, um, another, another list that I have, Let's see if I can pull it up quickly. Um, that is um, basically ask the question: What are your, what are your sports, or what what's your school status as well? Um, I'm trying to pull it up my drive here. Okay, it was called. It was basically uh, again another survey, winter sports plans, that was compiled by. Um, the athletic director at Penn Hills, and it's not loading just yet. Okay, so I'm reading down a list of different ones, and basically, um, uh, Cannon Mac is remote, Bethel Park, Chartiers Valley, Greensburg, Salem, Indiana. Mars, Moon, North Hills, um, Ringgold, Seneca Valley, um, Thomas Jefferson. Let's see. And okay, so, the, uh, so if you're comparing those two lists, the ones that are continuing, uh, you'd say a great, greater, greater than 50% of those are also full remote. That's correct. And I would say 75% to 80% are now remote. And, and that's why it became such a question for, for districts is, okay, how do we do this now do, if we're full remote? When they were in school, um, it seemed very you know, intuitive that you could have sports practices as well. Um, the question became, what if we're not in school? 
And that is, that was the nature of that list. I believe I'm, I'm thinking like 90% of that list that, that Dr. Short shared with you are the schools that are remote. And that, that's who was targeted in the survey. Hey, if you're remote, are you having sports? And that's, that was the nature of that question. Although it doesn't reflect that, you know, on the, uh, the document. Those okay. were the schools that were and targeted. It's also right, important uh, in examining that list to see the counties of the schools that are represented there. I, I believe I counted at least 16 schools of which are not in Allegheny County. So it's important to understand that. And, and also um, perhaps we can further uh, survey our districts who are in the area of Eastern Allegheny County to find out what's going on. Uh, Penn Hills, Woodland Hills, Plum, East Allegheny, in Allegheny County, because examining the list, and I do want to thank you, Don, for providing that, uh, but there are a lot of Westmoreland County, Butler County schools, which handle things differently, and I'll just say that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we get stuck in Allegheny County, yeah. which is predominantly the city drives up the numbers of COVID. We're on the verge of the border of Westmoreland County, but we have to abide by the Allegheny County rules when, you know, Allegheny County is huge and consists of the city. So we have to make our own determination on what's best for our school, mm -hmm. our community and our students and our families. Coach Hall, are the students practicing at all? Um, I know that the, uh, the basketball teams have gotten together on their own uh, at facilities outside of the district, um, not in, in any of our facilities. Obviously, they know that there's no practices, organized practices being held, uh, you know, right now for any of our teams. Um, it's a little easier to do that as a basketball group than it is for our wrestlers or our, our swimmers. Um, so the, the short answer is officially nobody's practicing right now. Can we, I'm just going to finish. Can we as a board make a decision to let them play? That's basically what all those different districts that were listed, um, you know, on, on that, that are going forward, their boards decided that they were going to go ahead and go forward um, while remote. Can I offer a point of clarification? The, the, uh, on November 18th, Monroeville, the municipality had 471 cases. Today, the total was 644. So we contribute to Allegheny County's rise of numbers also. Any other okay. questions? Thank you, Mr. Hall. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch as we uh, almost talk daily about what's happening. And if you hear anything else from the PIAA, we'll make sure we forward it to the board. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Grumman. All right, uh, Dr. Chakey. Dr. Chakey on. Yeah, I'm here. I have nothing further. Thank you. All right. Dr. Rossi? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schott? Nothing further. Thank you. Mrs. Crump? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Mrs. Bungard? Nothing at this time. Thank you. All right. And let's go to our board here. Uh, start with <clears throat> Mrs. Delaney. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gottman, President Gottman. <laughs> okay, two things I wanted to mention in Black history, and one particularly was just yesterday, November 30th, 1924, was when Shirley Chisholm was born. Now, many of you, of course, I know are not familiar with Shirley Chisholm, but just to give you a little insight here, Shirley Chisholm was the 
first black woman congresswoman in 1968, representing the state of New York in the House of Representatives. And, and I think that's very important to know if you didn't. She had honors through school and that was back in 1946. But as I said, she still live, is a living legend uh, for her accomplishments. And then even on today, December 1st, 1955, which was 65 years ago today, Rosa Parks was riding the city bus in Montgomery. And most of you know what occurred in that situation. I won't belabor it because most of you do know what happened in terms of the Montgomery bus boycott. I just want to say uh, thank you to both Ms. Sarushi and Mr. McIntyre for their jobs in leadership. And I look forward to working with both Mr. Gottman and Ms. Warning as we move forward during this very challenging time. And of course, we won't be seeing each other unless we run into each other, of course, in the store. And I'm always in the store. But that's another thing. If <laughs> I wish everyone a very safe, and happy Christmas holiday, whichever you celebrate with your families and friends and look forward to seeing you 2021. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go to the room, Mrs. Sarucci. Thank you, Mr. Gallman. I just would like to say congratulations to you and congratulations to Mrs. Warning. And I'm looking forward to much needed rest and relaxation. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's all I have. All righty. Uh, Mr. Ritter. Sure. Thank you to Mrs. Cerucci and Mr. McIntyre for your service and to Mrs. Warning and Mr. Gottman for your leadership. Here we go. Okay. So one quick thing that I, I have for us tonight, I did some uh, research with um, the question of how can we better update the school board video services that we offer. So I have a nephew that goes to uh, one of the colleges uh, and they offer uh, remote learning and they've got some advanced techniques for helping the, the students who are at home uh, to be able to understand the lessons provided by the teacher. So he suggested that I go ahead and look at that university's approach to doing that and see if it might be adaptable to what we're doing here at Gateway. Number two, he also suggested that we um, take a quick look at the hearing and deaf services of Pittsburgh, see what they have to offer. On a technical note, he said there are two types of captioning, open captioning and closed captioning. Open captioning is where the text is burned onto the screen and it can't be undone. Closed captioning allows the user to either turn the captioning on or off. We also have uh, an alternate approach and that's uh, an uh, in-person American Sign Language interpreter. This would be an expensive human who stands there, listens to what is being said and provides a real-time video of what's being said on the screen. So that's one, another approach. Another approach is real-time human captioning, almost like a court reporter who uses a specialized quick machine to capture the text and post it onto the screen and burn it into the screen. The other approach is what we've been doing, doing right now, which is a computerized speech to text approach, which, which doesn't always get the language right, sometimes um, providing some uh, comedic um, uh, phrases that uh, need to be um, undone or edited. So what I'm saying is there are a lot of different approaches here and we, the board needs to take a quick look at all those as we sort through what our best approach will be in the future. That's my report. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Ritter. Maybe we can run some of those ideas by Mike though and see what, uh, what we can do to make our meetings better. Very good. Okay, uh, sticking with the room here, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Gottman. Uh, congratulations to you and Mrs. Morning, and also thank you, Mary Beth and Rick. And uh, Ms. Delaney, if my memory playing tricks on me, but didn't Chisholm seek the nomination of president? You know what? I did mean to mention that too. She was the first to actually, I'm glad you brought that up. That's on my paper too. <laughs> she made history in 1972 when she became uh, 
uh, the first African American candidate to make a bid for the U.S. presidency. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. We yes. needed to know that. Yes, we did. That, that is the <laughs> Gateway Education uh, Mr. Williams had here. Exactly. Very good. Good. Yes. <laughs> and that's all I had to see. Man. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Madam Vice President, good morning. Oh, yes. Uh, Brian, congratulations. You're going to have a big year coming up with your future nup nuptials and everything, but wish you the best of luck, and I'll try to assist in any way. To Mary Beth and Rick, thanks. You guys have uh, um, a lot facing you, but appreciate everything we did. Um, just a reminder, the grab-and-go lunches are still being distributed from 11 to 1 daily. Um, they're at the Clark Building in Pitcairn. All the elementaries, which are Cleveland Stewart, University Park, Evergreen, and Ramsey. Gateway Middle will now be serving Monday through Friday. And the new location is Monroeville Fire Department number three, which is located on Third Street in Monroeville. So I know we're not in school, but the cafeteria staff, their team has gone above and beyond. Uh, Mr. Lorenzo, thank you and to your staff for the continuous of uh, worrying about our students and their needs. Um, I have a question about the winter sports. Since we will not be meeting again, all right, we do have in place, we have protocols in place for any incidents of positive cases on of any and all our sports teams. There has been no evidence and no confirmed cases that COVID is being transmitted on the field or court between participants. So is Gateway going to be one of the only districts that don't participate in winter sports? How are we going to be able to acknowledge this? What are we gonna do to allow our students, how, how are we gonna handle this? If we are not meeting again, is that something the board needs to talk about or how's this gonna be handled? I don't think a determination has been made officially. Um, I mentioned during my comment period that I would be updating uh, our constituents tomorrow uh, with information regarding our current status in Allegheny County um, with the COVID dashboard PDE which are recommendations, which, which we have been following. Uh, likewise, the, the governor's office has, and I did send that out to the board, strongly recommended, and, and those are his words, strongly recommended, uh, no K-12 athletics activities, at least until January 1. Uh, so as a district, we have been following those guidelines, recommendations. Is Coach Hall still on? I am. Uh, Coach, are the other, the schedules that the other districts have for winter sports, are they are moving forward playing? Are they you are. Um, like I said, the, at a minimum, the, the governor's guidance does allow for continued opportunities to work out for the athletes, kind of like we did by the extended summer before we started a postponed fall season. And, and my recommendation would be that we would try to at least let our athletes get in the required number of practices before Christmas so that if we didn't participate in any games until after Christmas, like January 1st or later, that we would not have to then make, make up all those uh, required practices. In other words, it doesn't just slow you down until you just can't say on January 1st, okay, we're going to, we're going to play because you need 15 practices before you can play a game. So yeah, I, my recommendation is it, within the governor's guidance, it says still allowing uh, athletes to work out on an individual basis. I don't think they mean individual student athletes, they mean individual teams uh, can work out. And essentially my recommendation at a minimum would be that we would go forward with some some organized practice um, while staying within all this health and safety plan 
protocols that we already have in place. If we do that, then we, we, we could potentially not play any games, not put any fans in, not play with other schools, not add to any of that, you know, issue uh, until after January 1st, which is the governor's recommendation. Um, but at least we'd be ready on January 1st with, you know, just a day or two of ramping things back up to go ahead and, and compete with other schools. Um, we lose a decent amount of, and I don't mean lose as in win lose, but uh, off the schedule, we'd have to cancel uh, or reschedule a pretty decent amount of athletic competitions that happen in the month of December that are scheduled. Um, but it's, it's conceivable that we could, we wouldn't be completely out of sorts if we had at least the practices in, and then they went ahead and started playing games after the Christmas holiday. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I hope that answered the question. Do you have any idea what Plum, Penn Hills, Woodland Hills are doing since they are in Allegheny County? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, Plum is going forward. Penn Hills was undecided. They weren't fully remote yet. Um, and Woodland Hills, I just got an email from him. They are, they are going forward. Um, with their schedule right now, probably uh, limiting spectators or eliminating spectators. When does the section games begin? Um, the middle of this month. Middle of December? Yes. Okay. I think that's answers my question. <clears throat> so Dr. Short, I know you're updating everyone tomorrow. I don't want to put you on the spot, but are we going to allow, as Coach Hall said, they're using the same cleaning solution, basically what's in the pool. Um, we're not going to allow our swimmers. Um, I think Mrs. Cerici can answer what the hockey players are using for their covers to make sure that they're covered um, and they're following protocol. Um, I understand, just, I'm just saying, I don't want Gateway not to be ready, not to be conditioned and then start because you will see more injuries. You will see more things happen to the students as they move forward. So as far as practicing, is that going to be as long as we are not in school that they won't be. I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but this is going to be. Well, I think what Val's trying to ask is if, if we you are go the spot. Remote, I know. If, if we would go full remote, would the curriculars still be able to participate? And just to clarify, when we shut down due to the alarming substantial increase, which at that time on November 23rd exceeded 200 cases and the positivity rate was hovering probably around five, six percent. Within the last 10 days, we've seen those numbers increase to 900 and guaranteed this Friday will exceed the 10% cap it's recommended for remote learning as well for positivity rate. So it, it's, it's a catch 22 situation. I'm not prepared to issue a what if situation at this point. Um, I am currently meeting with the Allegheny County Health Department um, superintendents from the IU uh, to discuss this matter. Uh, we, we've heard from our solicitor on this issue uh, we have to consider all those issues whenever, you know, this decision is made. Uh, but first and foremost, we're to provide the health and safety and welfare of not only students, but the staff who would be coaching or assisting during the time of practice. And we must consider that as well. I think all of us are familiar with, at least we are because we've talked about it, Secretary at Latrobe High School. And Jeanette. and Jeanette. 
to contract the virus, and unfortunately it passed away. Those two districts elected to go five days in person, thus negating the recommendations of PDE and the governor's Wolf's office. So all of those decisions are factored into a recommendation that comes from my office. So if the administration's recommendation is not to participate, I think Mrs. Warning is trying to see if the school board could override that and would we have to meet at some time? Uh, ultimately, the board has that decision um, to override a recommendation and, and we potentially could have to call a meeting if they so choose to do so. I'm gonna ask our solicitor, Mr. Dice, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, it's a recommendation from the governor, correct? I believe it's it's more than just a recommendation. I think he's attached to it. Uh, the fact that you may not be eligible for immunity in the event someone is um, contracted uh, the, the disease or the, the, the virus, that causes me to really pause because there's going to be instances where people are gonna come. This is a litigious society and people are gonna say, but for gateways, letting people come to the table and, and play sports, my son wouldn't be dead tomorrow or today. I mean, that's what happens. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we're living in today. And again, as I said to you, and I'm gonna say this uh, with some trepidation, but I believe that this is a governor's mess that he's created and now he should be the one to live with this because he should be given the school boards the, the opportunity to run their school boards like we see fit and offer us the legislative immunity, which was before the, the uh, legislature. Instead, he chose to veto that. That's just wrong. Mm -hmm. That puts us in the, in, the, in the breach, you and your fellow eight uh, board members in the breach. You know, let's work together. You know, you could use your face mask. You can do all the, the uh, separate and apart. You can do what you have to do to try to meet all these criteria. But it, it's either you are or you aren't going to play ball. And to me, you guys have some really momentous decisions to make. I heard tonight that maybe you can wait until after the first of the year to make this decision. With Dr. Short's uh, investigation, let's wait and see. So I think we revisited it again, but I want you to know the governor's not given you much room to work here. Uh, if I'm not making myself clear, the governor vetoed the legislation that would have given us a, a, an immunity from anybody suing because some kid, somebody else got COVID as a result of doing something at Gateway. And that's just wrong. I mean, that, that's how I see it. But again, I think, I think you guys are really doing your yeoman's job of, of researching it. Continue to do that and let's see what happens after the first of the year. I want, I believe that Valerie, along with the other eight members, wanna see the sports being played here. I know the parents do, I do, everybody does, except Governor Wolf. I, that's how I feel about it, and I'm I'm glad you asked. Right, can I you. can I sit, make a suggestion? Sure. You know, to try to compromise because Don Hall talked about the practicing. If the kids don't practice for 15 days, they can't really play. Maybe instead of revisiting as a new year, they can start practicing over Christmas break. Well, we we can shut down until Christmas, and then. The practices open up and allow them an, an extra week between Christmas and New Year. There's no school. The kids aren't going to be doing anything. I guarantee you that if they're, they're not practicing and they're not in a school, they're going to be at the park. They're going to be getting together. They're going to be playing football. They're going to be playing basketball at the park if the weather's nice. They're going to be sled riding or be skating on the pond. 
I mean, kids are still gonna get together. So we can do it in an organized, safe way, in a clean gym that's supervised, or, you know, we can't, we can't pretend that they aren't gonna stay home locked in their houses and not come in contact with each other because we know they're not. Because pretty much every case of COVID that we've had at Gateway came from outside. And I can reiterate that the school is the safest place to be because none of our administrators have got COVID. We have, do not have one case that we can prove that was contracted here at the school. It's all outside. So the school is a safe place to be. And Coach Hall says the gym is safe and the school is safe and the pool is safe tonight. This is one of the safest place for our kids to be. And those who do not wish to participate do not have to. Exactly. Coach Hall. Coach Hall. Yes. On the waiver that they signed, did you call it well, however, when they do their physical forms, do these parents and students both sign off? Is there, how is it written that if anything, you know, they contact, contract, contact the virus? Is there anything that we have written that we're not held accountable for it? How is that stated on our forms? Before, before um, Coach answers that, can I ask um, Mr. Gottman a question? Sure. Yeah, we're in board reports, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> we're entertaining discussion and, and motions and there's no motion no motions. Yeah, well there's a what if can't we just allow them is leading towards making that uh, just a question uh yeah i think we're we are beginning towards that uh slippery slope there of trying to do a do a, a motion knowing where our current situation is um no. so i'd like to you know ask that we refrain from making motions at this time um, and, you know, with this back and forth discussion here, I know Mr. Short wanted to get the update out there Dr. first. I, I'm sorry, Dr. Short, you want to get the update out there first. I, I think it'd be best to let him do his part. And then once it updates out, um, we can revisit all the stats and what's going on and then uh, attempt to make a decision if we so choose to before the first. And, and you I can do, always call for a special meeting. Yeah, and I, I, I do appreciate Mrs. Warning's att attempt here. And, <laughs> and I want to acknowledge that. And uh, likewise with Mr. Hall, I mean, he's going to advocate for his coaches and student athletes. And Don, we've talked about this. But, you know, we're looking at it, I meaning the board and my seat from a far more higher level of view, meaning like, you know, we're responsible for not only our students, but our staff and the community of the spread of the disease. And I, for one, would love to see our student athletes back on the courts, uh, in the pool, on the mat. Um, I, I, I agree that this is a difficult situation. However, the optics of this, we have to look at as well. In every meeting in the intermediate unit, one of the things we always highlight is how is the disease tracking in your particular communities? Mr. Gallagher provided some insight into our area of Eastern Allegheny County, Monroeville, Penn Hills, Pitcairn. The numbers are the numbers, they don't lie. And those numbers are far different when you go out to other areas of Allegheny County. In conversations with the hospitals, they're overflowing with patients. We're at the height of the pandemic at any point since it hit us in March. And we're talking about, and I'm not diminishing athletics, but there's far more responsibility of this board to the health, safety, and welfare of everyone involved. I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'm just gonna finish my report real quick, Brian. Um, I just wanna thank the teachers again for everything that they're doing to keep the kids as focused as they can be to get through their academics. 
Um, it's tough on everyone, but looks like everyone is working together. Uh, wishing everyone happy holidays. And I'm just gonna leave this. Um, I've been saying, as Mr. Ritter points out an awful lot that if our kids aren't active, we don't know what they're doing, but we're saying a lot of this, but people, I don't think you seriously have any idea what some other people are dealing with in their personal life. So I'm just asking, be nice. It's that simple. And with that, that's it. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Warning. Um, Mr. Gallagher. All right, yeah, I also wanted to thank um, Mrs. Cerucci and Mr. McIntyre for their, for their service and leadership and to congratulate you and Mrs. Warning um, on the, uh, your future. Uh, I also wanted to wish everyone a happy holiday season for all of our faith uh, communities that are celebrating um, different festivals, different celebrations, different holy days the, uh, that are, that'll be gathering before our, our next meeting. And uh, also just wanted to make a note as we're, as we're in the midst of a uh, pandemic, the, the, the COVID pandemic. Um, today is World AIDS Day, which was a pande pandemic that we faced that there are still the uh, millions of, of individuals that are suffering, but we've made some great progress there. The, uh, so we want to uh, keep in mind that it was a community rallying together and getting greater understanding that uh, brought us through those, those initial really, really difficult times. Um, they're still difficult today, but not nearly what they were. So there, there is light at the end of the tunnel, even while we're in the midst of our current pandemic. I have nothing further. All right, thank you, Mr. Gallagher and Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, I had something to say an hour and a half ago when these reports started. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank Mrs. Cerucci for uh, all the work she's done for the last two years as president. I, I think we did a lot of good work together as a leadership team. And uh, I expect the new leadership under uh, Mr. Gottman and Mrs. Warren will pick that up and run with it with uh, fairly seam seamless transition. Uh, so again, thank you, Mary Beth. Uh, good luck to Brian and Val. Um, this is one heck of a time to be a board member to begin with, but then to want to step up and be in a leadership role at this time, I think says a lot about your character and your commitment to the district. Um, and just to, to wrap it up, um, I don't want to not looking to open up the discussion back again about the athletics and activities. Uh, I would just like to reiterate to Dr. Short that uh, I appreciate all of your hard work. I, I do not envy the position you're in. I uh, have to essentially make this call. Um, I think I know where you stand. I know where the solicitor stands and I would have a very hard time uh, going against your recommendations, sir. And with that, uh, once again, just be safe, wear a mask and be kind. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Um, I would just like to first say uh, thank you to Mary Beth and Rick for everything they've done the last two years in office. You know, as we know, a lot has happened in those two years, including the once in a lifetime pandemic, and they have stepped up in it every time. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues for their confidence in me for president. I want to congratulate Mrs. Warning on the vice presidency, and I'm looking forward to working. Uh, with Mrs. Warning, Dr. Short, and all administration. I also would say that uh, with this position, I'm both humbled and proud to be elected for the Office of the Presidency. This is a role that I do not take lightly. You know, we've had a chaotic year with the pandemic and our goal of excellence and safety has always been our focus and priority. <clears throat> As president, those are goals that I know this board will continue to achieve. Just as our students excel from the classroom to the field, we will do so uh, we'll do the same in this boardroom. Our motto of nobody beats a gator stands true and more so now that we will not let this current situation beat us either. Um, moving forward, since we do have our buildings uh, shut down and students going remote, um, just to keep along with that, uh, the meetings that we are gonna have will be remote as well until we can have the buildings open. Um, I do have, I'm hoping to get some more artwork starting a new year and hopefully the board will allow me to continue my art uh, presentations moving forward. 
and I do want to wish the community a happy holidays. Um, I know I, I got the Hanukkah date wrong last time. I thought it was around uh, Thanksgiving. It's actually for December 10th. So those who may have accidentally celebrated around Thanksgiving, well, now you got two Hanukkahs. Um, but no, with that, yes, um, yeah, happy holidays, be safe, and take care. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to adjournment. Do we have a motion for adjournment? We do. Second. Okay, motion by Mrs. Cerucci, second by Mrs. Warning. Mr. Ritter. Uh, Mr. Ritter, okay. All right. All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, meeting adjourned. <laughs>